In this video, I'll be showing you how I put together this 10,000 milliamp hour battery bank with four USB outputs. However, I cannot recommend that someone put this together the same way that I did because it is not 100% safe. There are certain things that I did in the process of creating this battery bank that make it unsafe. And I will explain those things and talk about how they could have been done differently. I started out with two different laptop batteries that I had kept from older laptop. I then began to pry open the batteries which was a little bit difficult because there are no screws and so you have to pry it open completely. And you have to be careful if you're doing this so that you don't puncture the batteries. I was hoping to use the battery management system that was already attached to the battery bank. The battery management system basically deals with balance charging and making sure that there's not too quick of a discharge and making sure that the batteries don't get overcharged. And I attached it everything and hooked it all up, but unfortunately I couldn't get it to work completely. Sometimes it wouldn't charge and eventually it just didn't charge at all and it would just stop outputting voltage at all. Some of these controllers have identification uh, systems built in so that it has to connect with your laptop first and whatever the case is, I wasn't able to use the boards built on as the battery management system. I wanted to increase the capacity of the battery bank, so I started to take the cells out of the second battery bank from a different laptop battery. This laptop battery used 18650 lithium ion cell batteries, which are very common and used in a lot of different electronics. But the other laptop battery has markings on the battery which I was unable to use to determine exactly what the battery was. This is my first mistake as you should never mix different types of batteries. And this proved to be a mistake later on when I realized that charging the battery bank would cause the non-18650 batteries to overheat. Speaking of overheating, both of these laptop batteries have thermal sensors to make sure that the batteries do not overheat. This is the second mistake in building this battery bank because the battery bank does not have any heat sensors so it cannot cut off charging if the cells are overheating. But this could be fixed with a simple thermal cutoff circuit. Maybe I'll come back to that in a later video. I then begin to connect these two battery banks together, keeping in mind the correct polarity. Make sure if you do something like this that you use high gauge wire. After realizing the battery management system that came with the laptop battery is not working properly, I decided to cut it off and look for another one online. And I found one on Amazon that has everything you might expect. Balance charging, overcharging protection, overcurrent protection, and short circuit protection. I then begin to connect the BMS to the battery bank itself according to this circuit diagram. And make sure that you keep the JST plug on the BMS unplugged while you are working on it. And then I go ahead and test the BMS with this four USB output circuit that converts nine to 36 volts into the five volt output of USB. This is a product that I got off of IC station and I will be using it in this project. After plugging it in, it proves to be working. But keep in mind, you need to connect the battery first before you plug it into the USB module. The next step is to add a switch and a charging port. I got a nice pack of switches and 5.5 millimeter DC power jacks for a 12 volt charger off of Amazon. But you can use whatever switches or power jacks that you have, as long as the power jack connects to a 12 volt DC charger. And now I present you with the final circuit diagram. And so now the rest of the way, we're just going to be implementing this and putting it into an enclosure. Keep in mind that with this circuit diagram, you have to turn on the device in order to charge the batteries. I designed this as sort of a safety feature just in case you need to quickly cut off charging. And so I started by creating a hole in this Amazon Fire tablet box that I had for the switch. I then soldered high gauge wire onto both ends of the switch and then wrapped it in electrical tape. I then solder the switch in place according to the circuit diagram. And I use heat shriek tubing to connect the power of the battery to the wire on the switch. I then make a hole for the 5.5 millimeter power jack.
In addition, I mark out where the four USB output module is located. Create a hole for the USB slots. Then I wire everything together. And then I screw down the USB board with a bolt and a hex nut. And I also start to cover exposed areas with electrical tape. And finally, I add double sticky tape to the batteries and components. If you do it all right, you should have no loose components. And then it is pretty much complete. But a couple of things before I leave you with that. One of the reasons why I keep mentioning high gauge wire is because if you don't use high gauge wire and there's some sort of short or something, then you could easily cause a fire. But if you have high enough gauge wire and there's a short, then the battery management system is going to detect that short and shut off the system. This will then require you to cycle the power. And then I want to mention another reason why you shouldn't do this the exact way that I did. The wiring in this setup is not very good. There's wires going everywhere and it could lead to a short circuit if any of the wires get exposed. Also, the enclosure is made out of cardboard, which is probably not the best idea because if there is a short and it causes a fire or the batteries explode, then that would just create a larger fire. A metal enclosure would be the best, but that may be hard to find. And so that's about it for this video. I spent a lot of time working on putting this together and editing the video, so I hope you liked it. And I know I spent a lot of time talking about what you shouldn't do, but I think it's also important to release videos about you know projects that may have completely failed or aren't put together very well so that people can learn about doing it better. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. Have a great day.